Hello everyone, welcome to MESS e-learning channel. In this video tutorial, we will be studying about banking company final accounts and under banking company final accounts, we will be studying about profit and loss, balance sheet and key concepts which are included in the banking sector. I would like to begin with the introductory part. Bank is an institution which deals in money as a commodity and it also keeps the wheels of the economy moving. Post liberalization there has been a revolutionary change in the banking sector and technology is also adding to the drastic transformation which has taken place in the banking sector. These are the topics which we would be covering in the coming time. Before we move on to the actual formats of the banking company final accounts, it is very essential to understand the nature of business which a banks undergo. Any bank will have these two core functions that is accepting deposits from the public and lending the same in the way of loans and advances. Since the core functions of any bank are accepting deposits and lending the same in the way of loans and advances, there will be two major components. One is major income and expenditure for the bank. Interest paid on deposits, that is going to be the major expenditure for the bank. And interest received on loans and advances, that is going to be the major income for any bank. Company final accounts for banking system, they will be very different from company final accounts. And they are governed by RBI and Banking Regulation Act. Banking companies are not governed by companies act. In this case, we'll be having a brief and detailed idea about balance sheet, PNL account. Balance sheet and PNL account of banking companies include 16 schedules. That is from schedule 1 to schedule 16. And we will be preparing the final accounts in the vertical format as prescribed by RBI and Banking Regulation Act. Balance sheet is prepared in form A and in the vertical format. This is the format of the balance sheet. Balance sheet is prepared in form A in vertical format. The basic fundas be behind preparing balance sheet is going to be the same. It will be divided into two parts. The first part is liabilities and the second part is assets. When you understand the liability side altogether, there are five schedules. That is from schedule one to schedule five. The first item of the liability side is share capital. Second one is reserves and surplus. Third one is deposit. Fourth one is borrowings. And fifth one is other liabilities and provisions. After the liability portion, we'll just have a light, we'll just like to throw a light on the asset portion of the balance sheet. The first item on the asset side is cash and balance with RBI. Balance with bank and money at call and short notice is the second item. Next item is investments. Then you have advances, fixed assets, and other assets. Asset side portion of the balance sheet will include from Schedule 6 to Schedule 11. Schedule 12 is assigned to contingent liability. Now we will be studying in detail various schedules of the balance sheet from Schedule 1 to Schedule 12. Schedule 1, it includes your share capital. Schedule 2 includes your reserves and surplus, statutory reserve, share premium, capital reserve, revenue reserves, and other reserves are being included in Schedule 2. Schedule 3 is dedicated for deposits, bank assets, time deposit, and demand deposits from the public. It includes savings deposit, fixed deposit, and other forms of deposits. Schedule 4 is borrowings. So borrowings in India and borrowings outside India. Primarily under borrowings, a bank can borrow from RBI other banks and other institutions and agencies. Schedule 5, other liabilities and provisions. We have items like bills payable, inter-office adjustment, net, accrued interest and others. 
Inter, inter office adjustment net is one of the crucial item of schedule 5 of your balance sheet. So we will be seeing in detail about inter office adjustment net. A bank will have number of branches and there will be transactions between these branches. But when we close our accounts at the end of the year, there will be some transactions which are still unadjusted. And so towards the end, the difference, if any, it is transferred to inter office adjustment account. The resulting difference, it can be a debit balance or it can be a credit balance. If it is a debit balance, we will be posting under asset side. If it is a credit balance, then we will be posting under liability side. Now we are coming back to the asset portion of our balance sheet. Schedule 6 is cash in balance with RBI. So cash in hand is the first item and balance with RBI is the second item. Schedule 7, balance with bank and money at call in short notice. So it will be dividing, we are going to divide the schedule into two parts. One is balance with bank and the another one is money at call in short notice. Again in this schedule, we have to throw light on the concept money at call in short notice. Money at call in short notice, it is nothing but the money which is lent by the bank to the other banks in the call money market. But when we talk about liquidity, this kind of call and money market uh, advances, they come next to cash. And it is the second line of defense for the bank. Whenever bank wants its money back, it has to give a notice of less than 15 days. So this is our money at call and short notice. The next item of our balance sheet is investments. Investments classified into investment in India and outside India. Investment can be in government securities, shares, debentures, and so on. Schedule 9, the most important schedule of our balance sheet. When we just think of our balance sheet of banking companies, two schedules, they are very important. Schedule 3, deposits, because that is the core business of the bank, and Schedule 9, advances, wherein the bank is going to give loan in various forms. So we'll be having various forms of loans, like term loan, bank overdraft, cash credit, bills discounted, and so on. Schedule 10, fixed assets. We have only two major classification, premises and other assets. Schedule 11, that is again other assets. We'll be having inter-office adjustment, interest accrued, then we will be having non-banking assets, accepted in satisfaction of claims, stationary and stands. So inter-office adjustment, I would like to re revise once again. It is nothing but unadjusted balance between the branches of the bank during the closure of the year. And if inter-office adjustment is having a debit balance, then we'll be recording in the balance sheet on the asset side. Moving to the last schedule, that is schedule 12, contingent liabilities. Contingent liability, as we are aware of, it may or may not be a liability depending upon events happening in future. So when we talk about bank, the major contingent liabilities are acceptances, endorsements, guarantees given on behalf of constituents, liability on behalf of partly paid investments, and so on. Contingent liability will be recorded after the balance sheet. It will not form part of balance sheet, but it is recorded after the balance sheet. In this video tutorial, we have studied balance sheet, and in the next video tutorial, we will be looking after PNL account and other key concepts. Hope you understood. Thank you.